pages in that section in 4.3, but it's just all about making connections between those two. Now you can you can already talk about what the connection is between the function, the derivative, and the second derivative. If we uh, if we want to know what is the slope of this as you move this point along here, the slope of that line. So we are going to show a tangent to that line. That's the slope, right? Well, that just shows the slope of the line visually, right? Okay. As you, it's not, it's not the area of this little thing. This is, notice that down here, we'll move the point out of the way. So the slope is rise over one there, right? That's all that slope is. And when you get to this point, it's zero, and then it starts to go down, right? That's, that's the slope, right? Negative. The slope is negative for those points. This is a different function than was in that picture, of course. There, there isn't a place where it flattens out here. And then it becomes zero, and it goes back up again. This has, how many different intervals are there of increasing or decreasing for this one? There's three. How many were there for the previous one? How is that related to how many critical points it has? Yeah, it's like this has two critical points. Yeah, one more, right? If you have two critical points, if you put two points on a line, it divides it into three intervals. If you wanted to graph the derivative, Okay, which this is down here. Where are the points going to be for down here? Let's show a point on the derivative. Where is this point going to show up when I click this box here? It's going to show up at 32. It's going to be way off this thing, right? As I go to the right, where is this point on the uh, on the thing going to be? Like that's that point is that point is tracing out what the derivative looks like, right? The derivative is getting lower and lower. If you want to actually graph the derivative, you notice how when the slope is zero, it crosses zero, and then it goes down. It's it's going to be something with a it's going to be something with a degree two in it. It gets to a lowest point here, and then what happens to that point? Goes back up again, right? This is, well, I mean, physics and calculus kind of merge the farther along you go. Okay, so that, if we want to, we want to show this curve then, right? That point, that is the derivative because right there, right there, the slope is zero, the derivative is zero. The y values of this curve are the slopes of that curve. At this point, it's a it's a minimum because think about if this blue one was a road. You're turning the steering wheel to the right here. You're still turning the steering wheel to the right. At this point is where it's straightened out, and now you're turning the steering wheel to the left, right? Left, right? Okay. This is a this this is the point where this is the point where it actually changes to. Going back the other way. If you don't like the steering wheel example, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now the the problem is here when you when you start to graph the second derivative. No, notice that this is a cubic function, degree three, right? You know how to algebraically find the derivative. When you find the derivative of a cubic, it becomes something that is degree. Where did I put it down here? Degree. Two, right? Yeah. If you find the derivative of something of degree two, you get something of degree one. one. It's going to be a straight line. Okay. If you want to do the derivative of this, we're going to put the tangent on there. Maybe we'll maybe we'll get rid of this tangent for a while. Well, we got too much to too much to look at all at once here, so let's actually get rid of that function. Okay. So now we're looking at. Now we're looking at the derivative of the derivative, right? This is the slope of the derivative. And we want to see what the values are here. I still have to move this point because that's the way I made the thing, which maybe was kind of silly. But if I go to the right here, for this part, for this part, the derivative is the, the slope of that derivative or the second derivative. The red, the value of the red, so the slope of that red line is the second derivative. It's negative all the way to here, and then it's positive all the way to here. 
How, what does that correspond to the, well, what does it look like? It looks like that, right? It looks like a linear function because it's negative here, and then that point is where it, we need a point on that, I guess. Ignore the blue dot, right? The blue dot is, is the original function, but I didn't make a box to turn that off. So if you look at the dot on the red uh, line there, it's negative here because the slope is negative. On this side, it's positive because the slope's positive. There, the slope is zero. What, how does that correspond to the original graph? When the second derivative is zero, it means the slope of the first derivative is zero. All it means is uh, on the original graph here, it's where this kind of a change happened. It's where the steering wheel goes from one way to the other way, right? This is actually called, and this is later on in your notes, but this is called an inflection point. When the first derivative is zero up here, right? First derivative is zero. Let's take away this because that's confusing the issue. When the first derivative is zero, that's called a critical point. That's where the that's where the slope of the original function is zero. When the second derivative is zero, it's called an inflection point. It's where the slope of the second or the first derivative is zero. It's where the it's where this curvature of the thing changes. This side of the curve, if you divided this into two equal parts, there. If we divided this into two equal parts, get rid of that for a second, and that. The second derivative tells you something about what you call the concavity of the curve. This half of the curve is, it opens down. It's concave down. The concave side of the thing is down. This side of the curve, you would say, is concave up because the it's, it's you know, opening up. The concave side of the thing is up. Concave and convex, right? Concave is when the, the inside of something like this, right? And convex is the outside of something like that. Does this all come up later? Does it all come up later? Why? Because you want to, is that too much all at once or what? Yeah. Yeah. Those, that terminology we're going to write down after. I want you to just understand it right now and think about it. What does the first derivative tell you about the curve? The first derivative tells you, so if I look at where the first derivative is, certain things here. When the first derivative is zero, like when this green point goes to zero here, that's when the slope of the original curve is zero. The derivative is zero there, and the derivative is zero there, because the slope of the original function is zero. The second derivative tells you where, when the second derivative is zero, it doesn't tell you where the slope of this is zero. It tells you where there's what you call an inflection point when the concavity changes. Because think about what's happening with the slope here. I'm going to put the slope back on this original function. When this changes, remember that this is the rate of change of the rate of change. Maybe you should go somewhere else and do that. No, like seriously. What is happening with the slope here? Tell, the, the red line here, the second derivative, tells you how the slope is changing. This is the rate of change of the rate of change. So now when, I want you to tell me how is the slope changing here. You can look at this number or you can just look at the slope and think about it for yourself. So we're starting here. What's happening to the value of the slope as I move across here? The slope is decreasing. The function's increasing, but the slope is decreasing there. What happens as I pass here? Does anything significant different happen there to the slope? It's still decreasing. It's still decreasing. What is happening when I get to this certain point, right? It's at zero. It's not changing. The slope is... The slope is now... What's happening to the slope? It gets to about negative 12, and then what happens? It starts increasing. Remember, we're not talking about the values of the function. We're talking about this. Right? When it gets to that point, to that inflection point, that's where this is at its lowest. The slope is at its lowest. That's why this curve has a minimum there. Because the slope is at its lowest point there. And then when you keep going with this, 
the slope keeps getting bigger. Whether it's positive or negative, the slope is increasing. The second derivative tells you about the concavity. The first derivative, thank you. The first derivative tells you about the actual values of the function.